Welcome back to Max Live at the Max Stern Athletic Center. My name is David Schwartzman. To my right is Jacob Dower. We've got a good one in store for you tonight. The YU Max are looking for their 14th straight against the old Westbury Panthers. They're coming off a win against Sarah Lawrence College on Sunday. They won by 15, 70 to 55. And if you just look for the 12 games before that, you're going to see W's. Um, and, and not too many L's since that, those first six games of the season when they started off 1-5. and five. The starters tonight for the old Westbury Panthers, Justin Elaine Washington, along with Chase Johnson, Pedro Marquez, Stanley Baker, and star forward senior from my hometown of Hempstead, New York. I'm actually from West Hempstead, but, and I went to school in Uniondale as well. Alan McDonald, I didn't go to Uniondale High, but he went to Uniondale High. Al Alan McDonald, the star forward, 6'2", the senior. And for the Maccabees, it's gonna be Gabe Leifer, Ryan Terrell, Tal Guetta, Simcha Halpert, and, Dan and Donnie Katz, kind of your normal, usual suspects for the YU Max. Yeah, well, first for the Panthers, just got word, look out for sharpshooter number four, Chase Johnson. In his past three games, shooting over 60% from the three-point line. Can hit from anywhere on the court. Always got to be aware of him. Um, and that's a quick way to get some points if you're the Panthers. So want to lock him up if you're the Max. And as we said in the pregame show, Alan McDonald, they run everything through him. Post player, can shoot the mid-range, can rebound the basketball. Always got to be aware of him. And on the Max side, of course, led by Ryan Terrell, the freshman point guard. They run through him on all sides of the ball. Plays defense, plays offense, long. He can defend, score in transition, look for him to get involved early, kick out the shooters. I want to see Simcha Halper come out firing today. Usually, when he shoots the ball well, good things happen for the YU Maccabees, so let's see how they play. Last time these two teams met was at the Clark Athletic Center over, over in Old Westbury. The Max won that one 76 to 48, so that, if any indication, tonight could, be, could get ugly kind of fast especially by the way the Max have been playing in their last 13. Yeah, well, the Panthers actually over 500 on the year, one of the tops in the division as well. But seems like the Max just match up well against them, beating them handily at their place. So I don't think the Max are expecting anything short of a big win tonight here at home. First game back in front of the full crowd, or second game back, I believe. Um, Want to give the fans a good showing. A lot of guys out here, a lot of guys tuning in tonight. So hopefully the Max get it done. And I was, co I was talking to coach before the game, Coach Steinmetz, and I asked him what the difference was from that beginning, that one and six start until now. And he said it's as simple as Simcha Halpert is team captain. Him being healthy and ready to go really is what propelled this team to 13 straight wins, and it's what's going to propel them the rest of the season. I also asked him about that tough end of, the end, of the end of their year. They're playing Farmingdale as well as Mount St. Mary. That was, kind that was only because that game got postponed due to snow from last week. But he said that's just the way the league schedules it, and, and that's going to be the way that they finish out the season. So we're going to get exciting basketball from the Max over the next couple weeks, and it's just, gonna, it's just a great time to be a Max fan as Donnie Katz just throws it a little wide to Ryan Terrell, and it's going to be Panthers ball. Pedro Marquez is the one who overlooked that. Pedro Marquez, he's, a, he's 6'10", junior from New York, New York. He went to Cardinal Hayes. He's got the ball now with Ryan Terrell on him. Delane Washington. Talguet is taking him at the top. Chase Johnson goes up with it, but to no avail. And Gabe Leifer comes down with the rebound. That's something he's been doing a lot lately. Yeah, big rebound by Leifer. Force in the paint. Like to see limiting the Panthers to one shot. Good things happen. We see the Panthers coming out in the zone. Let's see if Wally the break got it. And there Leifer it is. over to Halpert. And that's almost routine at this point. We've seen that so many times over the season. And it's, a ch it's Chase Johnson. 18 left to go here in the first half. We're just getting started. 2-0 max lead. Yeah, great pass by Leifer. Great right-handed finish by Halper off the good cut. Way to break the zone. And the YU Maccabees out in their patented man-to-man. -man. Don't play a lot of zone. They match up well. Switch on defense. Play hard. Alan McDonald, the star player from Hempstead, New York. That's right near my hometown. Simcha Halper goes up with a three. That's just in and out. And it's going to be off of... Terrell, and it will be Panthers ball once again. 18.50 left to go. Yeah, but for Coach Steinmetz, love to see Hopper come out firing. The right-handed layup, no hesitation with the three-inch transition. Couldn't go. Good shot nonetheless. 
Max up two just a minute into this ball game. McDonald inbounds to Elaine Washington. He sends it over to Chase Johnson. Chase Johnson's been bringing the ball up for the Panthers thus far, and Terrell's been taking him. I'm interested to see what happens with Terrell. I'm interested to see what happens with Terrell over over these this game and over the next couple of games because teams are starting to realize what he's about as McDonald goes up with the three. That's no good, and Halper comes down with the rebound. Yeah. Good help by Leifer, getting back on his man. McDonald, their hot hand, takes a three, no good, as Ryan Terrell comes down, puts right. in the two. So Ryan Terrell, who I'm, I'm interested to watch tonight because team, he, you know, he's the freshman, he's the star, he's, he's the breakout player on this team. Teams may not have known about him, but obviously they're catching win now. I was watching Dave McHugh, he's on D3Hoops.com the other day, and he was gushing about Ryan Terrell. So people are clearly gaining sight of Ryan Terrell's talents as the defense chants come out from the... Max Faithful, Pedro Marquez up with it, and that's good. They're not going to call the foul, and it's Max in transition. Transition offense was one of the JD's keys. Let's see how they get with it, but it's intercepted by Delane Wa by Elaine Washington, excuse me, and Pedro Marquez, who hit that nifty three, takes it up and passes it over to McDonald. McDonald now to Elaine Washington with Tal Guetta on him, and they're going to call the foul on Guetta. Yeah, a little bit over-aggressive by Talguetta. Good defense though by the Max. Almost a prayer three answered early in this ballgame by the Panthers, but Coach Diamond's got to be happy. Great defense thus far. 4-3 Max, still in the man-to-man. -man. Justin Elaine Washington sends it into Allen McDonald. Gives it to Pedro gives it to Pedro Marquez, but that was no good. And now Gabe Leifer brings down the ball for the Max. Playing point forward. Not scared to bring it up as Donnie Katz. He's one up. And we've, it in. we've seen that from Donnie Katz. We've seen that occasional three, especially early on. And now the Panthers will call a timeout. It's 17-14 left to go. Max up 7-3. Yep. Coach Tomlin not having it. Doesn't want to give up easy threes in transition. Calls a quick timeout. Max up 7-3. Love the aggressive play by Donnie Katz. Firing on all cylinders. Big three in transition. No hesitation bottoms for Mr. Katz. And that's been a common three. That's been a common three that we've seen as of late from Donnie Katz. Yep, and all starting on the defensive end, limiting the Panthers to one shot, rebounds, moving the ball up quickly, and that's what happens. You move the ball up, you get an open shot. Donnie Katz not known for his three-point prowess, but you wouldn't know it there. Panthers got to respect that one. Is Ryan Terrell pressuring up in the front court as we have Pedro Marquez bringing the ball up. Had that wild three-pointer go in just a couple moments ago. Allen McDonald sends the ball over to Elaine Washington. Back over to Stanley Baker. McDonald to Baker with Simcha Halpert on him. Taken by Simcha Halpert, but that's, oh, that's going to be good. Oh, no, they're going to, just before Ryan Terrell oh. throws down, which is something we've seen quite often here. They're going to call a shot clock violation, I believe. A shot clock violation, or I thought maybe that went out of bounds. Well, it's the max ball, so it looks like a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Unfortunate, <laughs> but I'd like to see Gabe Leifer stepping up on those screens, giving Marquez no room to breathe. And our... Our quota of a dunk a game almost got met there. We're going to say it hasn't got met, so. Yeah, we're maybe count that as a half dunk. I'll, I, I'm going to want to see another one from Ryan. And we still see the Panthers in their zone. Halpert, he's in the corner. Gives it to Gabe Guetta, but he's out of bounds, and it's going to be Panthers ball, 16-28 left to go. It's 7-3 in favor of the Max. Yeah, Leifer telling Guetta to stay in his spot in the dunker spot, the short corner. He'll be wide open. Leifer with the ball in the middle. Middle guy's got to come up and get him. Tal Guetta will have wide open laps all night. Just got to sit still, wait for the ball, trust his teammates. Elaine Washington has the ball for the Panthers. He's looking for the options he has. 16-14 left to go, 7-3 Max. As Baker takes it down, and here goes Terrell. This is going to be fun. Ryan Terrell throws it down. All starting with the defense. Gabe Leifer, block, gets it. Transition pass, 
And there it is, Donnie Katz exactly, the charge. That's exactly what the Max Faithful likes to see, a Donnie Katz charge call. 9-3 in favor of the Max. Yeah, the bench loves it, the crowd loves it, everyone loves it, unless you're a Panthers fan. But we're in the YU Max Stern Athletic Center. It's a great start for the Maccabees thus far. 15-47 left to go, 9-3 Max. Tal Guetta has in the corner, he's looking for his options. Gives it to Donny Katz, and that's an errant pass that gets to nobody. And they're gonna say... Max Ball. They're gonna say Max Ball, they're gonna say Stanley Baker touched it on, his, on its way out. Yeah, just a miscue by Baker, touching the ball would have sailed out of bounds. Let's see if they changed the call, it looked like it was tipped. That's just an aggression play. And, and they're going to change it now. They're going to say that it, went, it did not touch Stanley Baker, and it's going to be Panthers' ball. 15:37 left to go here in the first I mean, half. If you're the Max, stick with what's working. Slow the ball down when you're in the half court on offense. Feed the ball to the middle. Gabe Leifer playing point forward. Just got to turn to the rim, make a decision. He could shoot the ball. He could pass the ball. That's their best bet if they want to be scoring every pa time. Pedro Marquez has the ball. Sends it down to Alan McDonald, the big man. He gives a nice hook, but to no avail. And he's going to go up for foul shots. They're going to call the foul on Halpert, I believe. No, they're going to give it to Leifer. Can't believe it. Looks like he's playing straight up D, but McDonald's going to get that. Star call. Star players get star calls. Leifer, though, cannot sag off him. He's playing outstanding defense thus far. We saw the block leading to the two. And the YU Max team as a whole, four points on the board for the Panthers, but we saw that wild three-pointer. They'll take that every time. Great start by the Max all around, which is five minutes into this ball game. Allen McDonald misses his second. Leifer came down with it and gives it over to Terrell. 15-20 left to go here in the first half. And let's see, Leifer going back to the high post to see if they feed him. There it is. Leifer has it. He's about at the top of the three-point line. Gives it to Terrell. Terrell f tries to find a cutting Tal Guetta. But that doesn't work, and Elaine Washington brings up in fast transition for the Panthers. Allen McDonald misses, and Gabe Leifer brings it down, and now it's the Max in fast transition. Simcha Halpert slows things down, gives it to Terrell. Terrell at the top of three, gives it to Leifer. He's at the foul line, sends it to Halpert. Halpert goes up with it with a man in his face. That's just short, and McDonald, excuse me, Stanley Baker brings it down for the Panthers. Yeah, tough shot by Halpert. And it's taken right back. That was a little bit of a miscommunication. Elaine Washington didn't see that the pass was thrown to him. And it's Max Ball once again. Terrell, 4-3. That's short and taken down by Baker. Halpert called for the loose ball foul. Can't believe it. Max a little too aggressive on the offensive end, throwing up contested threes. Coach Nimitz doesn't like it. He'll call a timeout. As we said a couple moments ago, slow it down in the half court, got to feed the middle. The Max face a lot of zone as most of their conference teams play zone against them. They're used to it, they know it's coming. Really, it all is broken down by the middle. Once you get the ball to the middle, the defense has to collapse and it only is gonna work if Gabe Leifer stays aggressive. He has to be willing to shoot the ball. If not, they'll sag off him, but once he gets a couple buckets, they're gonna pressure him and they'll be just fine. If you like hearing Jacob Dower, boy, well, you're not gonna, this isn't for sure not gonna be the last time we hear him. Potentially regular season, maybe, but we have a lot coming up here on Max Live. Some things we've always had and some brand new things. March 14th starts the Red Sirecheck tournament. I'm sure you're very excited for that. That's a big one. That's a big one. And, da and Jacob Dower will be getting the cream of the crop games. Uh huh. As well as for the first time on Max Live, this is big. We're, we will be covering. Listen to this. We will be covering the Yeshiva League JV and Varsity Championship. That's going to be right here at the Maxner Athletic Center. First time you're hearing about this. First time you're hearing about this. This is the first time I think most, this is the big announcement right here. As well as, now this is also big, the Yeshiva League Hockey Championships will also be on Max Live this year. So we got a lot happening. It's really the definition of March Madness here on Max Live. And also will be the home of all your, the rest of the Max Playoff well, run. From now until then, I'll be brushing up my hockey. <laughs> We would love to have you on the call. There as it is. Donnie Katz goes in and he's denied by Stanley Baker. But there it is. Ryan Toe with a great pass to the middle. They're helping out on Leifer in the low post. Donnie Katz with a layup. Blocked, but still a good play nonetheless. As we have number 31, Mike Hayone. 
The senior forward and number 24, Jeffrey Owen, the freshman guard, making big impacts off the bench this year. We knew little of what he was going to do, and he's been nothing short of outstanding off the bench, especially after the Daniel Tino injury, as Gabe Leifer no good from the low post. And these Michael Hyon and Jeffrey Owen are just two guys that have really gotten making their identities known here this season. Jeffrey Owen, the freshman. Michael Hyon, the senior. And they've been bringing Hyon in for, for, for sizing purposes. That's what it seems like, and, and it's done them well. Yeah, defensive miscommunication on the other end led to a Stanley Baker too. As Simcha Halpert fires away and puts it down. Three-pointer by Halpert, his first of the game. Great possession. Max lead back up to six, almost seven minutes into this ball game. And that's the winning equation that we like to see. And a 12-6 lead for the Max, which is now lowered to a 12-8 lead for the Max. That's Elaine Washington from Valley Vern from Mount Vernon, New York. Every player on, on Old Westbury is from New York, and I always like to see that as a native New Yorker. I, I can't say I like the same as but, we have well, myself and much of the Max basketball team from Los Angeles, California. I was about to say, I believe about about half the team of the Maccabees, I think that's this may be one of the first times ever, is entirely from California as Terrell bringing it up fast. He's got his best two with him. That's Leifer and Halpert, and Leifer gets it and puts it up. There it is. That's a six-point lead. It's 14-8. to eight. Maccabees, 12-28 left to play here in the first half. Big Leifer showing his strength, going around the defender, muscling for two, 14-8. Great pass by Ryan Terrell also. There it is, transition offense. Not everyone was back, taking advantage. Elaine Washington was being guarded by Jeffrey Owen. Stanley Baker tried putting it up, but Hyon came down with the rebound. Now Jeffrey Owen brings it in. He has a little room, but he gives it over to Terrell. Terrell, 4-3. That's just good, not good. And now Elaine Washington brings it down for the Panthers in transition. That's Pedro Marquez. He goes up with it. That's just a little too far. And now Leifer brings it back. We've seen a little bit of a back and forth here in the last couple of seconds of this game. And now the Max are going to slow it down. 11.52 left to play here in the first. Jeffrey Owen to Gabe Leifer, who sends it down to a wide open Simcha Halpert. And he puts it up, and it's 16-8. to eight. And that's and what we've been talking about. Gabe Leifer in the post. Top guy comes up. Simcha Halpert sitting with no one around him. Easy to. 16-8 Max, Coach Tomlin, second time out of the game. Not liking it, they gotta do something on defense because whenever the Max slow it down, make the smart pass, they're scoring at will. 11.45 left to go here in the first half. They're up by eight. And it seems like they're staying true to JD's keys so far. Yep, and that's the way to win the ball game. Stay true to those keys. As the YU Maxer and Athletic Center beginning to fill up, we see the far end, the one you see on your camera, mostly full to left and center. Rose and our side also. A lot of people coming in. One of the first games back after break. Coming down to the home stretch of the season. The YU Max, as hot as a team could be over the past 13. I'm wondering what the longest win streak is. Maybe we can get a fact check on that. I believe the longest win streak is somewhere around seven or eight, where we're way past the longest win streak in Max history. I was just testing you. I believe we're way past the, the I, I believe we're past that point. Well, maybe we'll get to all of D3 history. I. I I'd, I'd be inclined to say there's probably been teams to go undefeated. That could be. It could be. A anyone, wants, anyone wants to tweet at us at Max Live. Sure, yeah. Comment on Facebook. Anything you want. We are live on Facebook. If people are wondering, we are in fact live. We're not live on Facebook. Excuse me. I take that back. Never we will, mind. We will have that back up hopefully soon. Next game, I, 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 I was wrong. We are not live on Facebook. So if people are wondering why we're not on Facebook, you tell them they should just go to MaxLive.com. A Chodesh Tov to everyone as well. Misha Nechnas Adar. I, it seems to be I'm always put on the, 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 the higher ups seem to always put me as Ryan Terrell takes the ball and that's a one handed wow. slam a jamma. This crowd is now Marvin Besimcha after that one, I'll tell you that much. And I'm looking forward to those Misha Nechmas Adar, Marvin Besimcha chance. We got to experience those in, our, in the playoff run last year. We have two times the amount of Adar. This year we have Adar Alf and, Alf and Adar Bet. As that's no good from McDonald and it's going to be Max Ball. Hopefully if we get a large enough lead tonight we can hear the fans erupt in one of our favorite tunes or songs. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, big Halig of Shab, uh, Rosh Chodesh Davening led by Eitan Katz here at YU. Anyone interested coming up, 7.20 a.m.? That's an exciting, that, that sounds very exciting to me. Hayon gives it to Terrell who tried the no-look pass to Guetta, but that wasn't good. And Pedro Marquez has it now. Over to Alan McDonald. McDonald fakes and goes. They're going to call a blocking foul on Hayon, I believe. Number 31 reaching in. 
That play just looked uncomfortable from our end. Yeah, but great defense. Max only giving up eight points, almost 10 minutes into this ball game. The Panthers look uncomfortable on the offensive end. Max pressuring, and I really like the hedging on the screens up top. The Max not, as we see Donny Cat stepping out, the Max not giving dribblers any room, forcing turnovers. Allen McDonald has it. Terrell on him. He goes up with it, no good. But Stanley Baker cleans up his mess and puts it up, and it's an eight-point lead, 18-10, Max. Yeah, it's a little too easy. If you're Coach Steinman, it's got to limit those. We said that, JD's keys, keep them off the offensive glass. There's an easy two for the Panthers. Terrell now, he sinks that pretty looking shot, yeah. and it's back to a 10-point lead for the Max. His patented mid-range two taking over. Gabe Leifer out of the game, about to check back in. Ryan Terrell playing the high post, and I want to see more of that out of Leifer. He has those capabilities. Keep the defense honest, and then he'll be able to make easy passes like he did to Halpert a couple possessions ago. As we have the other Halpert, Aton Halpert, getting ready to check in this ball game, making his first appearance of the day. Stanley Baker over to Chase Johnson. Chase Johnson looking for his options. He goes in, and they'll call the foul. Coach Steinmetz doesn't like it. Great slow step by Johnson. And that's going to be on Donnie Katz. His first. His first. As his father is not happy about the call from the stands, we get to sit right next to Mr. Katz. He sits to the right of us. Always That's a always pleasure. a good time. Always, for sure, always a pleasure. And it's nice seeing, it really is nice seeing the Maxwell Athletic Center fill up a little bit as Knight Seder is about 25 minutes deep. Chase Johnson hits his first. Ryan Terrell gonna take a seat, standing out from the crowd as always. A great start. It's, it's expected at this point, which is wild to think a freshman expecting, you're gonna almost expect him to put up at least 20 every single game, day in, day out. He rarely disappoints. Lifer comes down with the rebound. That was a miss from Chase Johnson. And now Aton Halpert checks into the game for the Max brother of Simcha. He's the fresh, he's a freshman. Tal Guetta has the ball, gives it to Gabe Lifer. Lifer looking at his options, sends it across to, to Aton Halpert, excuse me. Halpert gives it down to Donnie Katz. Donnie Katz fighting, shot clock down to seven. Owen finds Guetta, and Guetta puts it in. A nice, nifty, uh, he, his back was turned to the basket, but he somehow yeah. finds a way. Great and, pass. And great. it's a 22-11 game in favor of the Max. Great pass by Owen, great finish by Guetta. Shot clock was deep, doesn't matter, as Marquez throws up a wild one. Rebounded by Owen, they're pushing. Five on four break. Owen gives it to Leifer, Leifer down low, he gets fouled, and he's gonna go to the line for two. Gabe Leifer staying big, getting the foul, going to the line for two. The Max over an 11 point lead, looking to extend it to 13. A great start by the Max, and it's all stemming from the defensive end. You get stops, you'll get transition, and you're gonna get to the line for two as we just saw. The Max playing very, very well on both sides of the ball. 22 points is 10 minutes into this ball game. And Leifer misses his first. 9.02 left to play, 22 to 11, Maccabees, they're up by 11. And we have, after this we have three more home games. So yep. next Thursday night, the Maccabees will be taking on Purchase College here at the Maxwell Athletic Center. Yeah, well we got two before then, we won't be live. But we got St. Joseph's College at Brooklyn. You know St. Joseph's, St. Joseph's very well, as we like to call them. And U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. I actually had a pleasure calling that game as well with a big win a couple weeks ago. So two winnable games, but on the road, you never know. And the Max have just been winning pretty much everywhere. It's been about, it's been pretty split over those that over the 13 game spread as Guetta goes up, and that's off the side of the hoop. And you know, I don't like to see that from Guetta, especially because I don't want I don't like his confidence to be to be ruined. So I I I felt in the past that sometimes he doesn't take that shot that he should be taking. Yep. And you're right. Didn't start the season off well, but a couple games in he found his groove. Never like to see that, especially for the home team. The Max know about that short corner, very hard to shoot under. Usually tough for the opposing team. Max rarely hit that, but you saw it there as Halper with the good hustle couldn't save it. Ryan Terrell off the bench. Love to see that. Dapping up his fellow freshman with the great hustle but the Panthers will keep the ball down 12 825 left in this first half Shakiro Samuels came in for Allen McDonald so that's interesting to see early on they haven't subbed much he's the first sub for the Panthers the Max have rolled out a couple more guys but it's taken from Stanley Baker and now Aton Halpert gives it to Lifer Lifer 
finds Simcha Halpert. Fakes the shot but couldn't get it off and now it's back down to Leifer but it's taken away by Pedro Marquez with Simcha Halpert on him and a nice move by Marquez. Yeah, lazy pass by Leifer, taken away easily by Marquez. Great finish, cuts the lead to 10. 7.58 left to play here in the first half. And let's see Leifer get back in the high post. He's standing outside but makes a great pass and a great lefty finish by Halpert on the run. Big two, hopefully that gets his confidence going. 12 point game, lead for the Max. And it's always a pleasure seeing the Halperts play together. Eitan and Simcha, the brothers out of Shalhevet from California, your alma mater. Yep, Shalhevet, we actually have Rabbi Siegel, the head of school in attendance tonight, taking out all the Shalhevet alumni in town. Gonna be a good one after this game as Idan Soko also from Shalhevet High School joining us. Do you know where you're gonna be going to? Um, we might have to keep that Disclosed. Down low. I, I would not want people coming out in drones trying to see you as I'm sure people want to do and get that autograph. Yep, no paparazzi will be at dinner tonight as a big finish by the Max, extending the lead to 14. Great all around basketball as Simcha Halpert pressuring in the front court. Elaine Washington, one of my favorite, I always like to say my favorite name of the night. That's probably my favorite, Justin Elaine Washington. That's a good one. That's a good one. Shakiro Samuels giving Sh him a run for his money. I'll I like Shakiro much. Samuels as well. All great, beautiful names. And I'm, I'm glad to see Shakiro Samuels on the court. I'm just interested to know what's going on with Alan McDonald. We haven't seen much of him so far this game. He hasn't really done much. He's actually missed quite a few shots. Yeah, but Gabe Leifer playing great defense on him, really limiting him. We see him out of the game right now. You can tally it up to bad offense, but you got to give the credit where the credit is due on that defensive end as, oh, Shakiro Samuels with a interesting take. Oh, the crowd doesn't like it. They're going to call the foul on Halpert. Yep. And Coach Steinmetz is not happy about the call. Not at all. Not at all. They're going to call on Halpert. Late call. That's what's going to bother them. We have a lot of fans not happy with that one, but Shakiro Samuels will be at the line shooting two. Attempting to cut this lead to just 10 points. 6.31 left in the half. Ryan Terrell's gonna check back in. Jack Terrell has checked into the building, one of our one of our personal Max Live favorites. Love to see that. Brother of Ryan. I believe his other brother is here as well. We already and know that the Terrell parents are listening at home. Very faithful. Very one of, one of fans. some of our biggest fans, the Mr. and Mrs. Terrell. Uh -huh. Shakiro Samuels hit his first. It's a 27-16 lead with 6.31 left to play. And we have, we have the clock now on your screen. Don't need to announce it as much, but we will anyways. Love to see that. Always updating the tech over here. Justin Safier, always on his game. Here every night, day in, day out, putting and, in work. And as president of Max Live, I want to give a huge shout out to our vice president, Justin Safier, who's worked tirelessly on just always wanting to improve our set up here and as you can see we have a brand new look to our website as to as lifer puts one in yeah. we have a brand new look to our website we have the scoreboard up and running with the time so it's just it's a good time to be a fan of max live and thanks in a lot of part to justin safier so thank you justin and he doesn't like the accolades but they are well deserved yeah gabe lifer with a big tipping on one end but stanley baker puts it in slides right by lifer with the easy two back on the other end lead back down to 10. so this lead's been hovering around 10 so far this game and max have been have had sort of quiet first halves and then have broken it open lately so we'll see what happens there but i think the most the one of the biggest positives of the half so far is the 19 points they've given up early in the season they were they, they, they were giving up just a lot of points 91 to Sarah Lawrence when they lost that one. 99 to St. Joe's, that game you called. And as of late, they've given up so few points. I mean, against Sarah Lawrence last game, they gave up 55. Against Mount St. Vincent before that, they gave up 54. 45 to St. Joe's. So just in yep. comparison, the first time around, they gave up 99 and just 45 the next time out. So you can see that the defense is really sharpening up as Jeffrey Owens denied by... There it is, By Ryan Stanley Terrell. Baker, but Ryan Terrell takes it right back, and he goes up, and a nice move, but it didn't work. As Samuels now brings up the ball for the Panthers, 5-13 left to play here in the first. That's Chase Johnson for three, but it's no good, and taken by Terrell now back in transition. That fast YU offensive transition that's given over to, to Leifer. Ooh. They're going to call Terrell with the charge on the pass off. Great defensive play by the Panthers, and we were talking about it before, the 13-game win streak. Why are they doing it? What's the common trend out of all these games besides the fact that they're W's is that 
Their defense has been stellar, giving up just not as many points as they've used to, and the defense leads to offense. It all starts on that defensive end. They're playing well there, and that's why they've been winning ball games. The match, again, a 13-game win streak. Been stellar over the past couple months. Nicholas Camarez, a very nice guy. I actually got to meet him before the game. Checks in for the Panthers. And I'm very glad that I asked Coach how to pronounce his name because I don't think I would have got it done. Elaine Washington with the bank three That's makes it boy. a seven-point game. Picked up a charge on one end, three on the other end. Spark plugging this Panthers team, only down seven right now. 4.30 left in the half as Lifer controls. Lifer to Guetta. Guetta now to Don Donnie Katz down low. He's looking for what he can do. He sends up. A shot, but that's no good and taken back by the Panthers. A Hail Mary pass now to Pedro Marquez, but he couldn't corral it, and it'll be Max Ball, 423 left to play, 29-22 in favor of the Max. Yeah, missed cue by Marquez. Not what you want to see if you're Coach Tomlin. Down seven with a chance to cut it to five. They've been really outplayed thus far, but only down seven on the scoreboard. You want to take every advantage that they can. Couldn't do it there. As now Don, we see Donnie Katz on the high post. A little 2-3, matchup 2-3 by the Panthers right now. Let's see if why you can take advantage. Guetta has it, he drives and goes in, and that's almost automatic wow. for Guetta. He's been really good down low. Not so tall, but he's just been really able to produce a lot from down low and driving, and he makes the 31-22 lead for the max, 355 left. He's not just a spot-up shooter, he's a slasher, he's big, he's 6-3. He can play from everywhere. That three from Elaine Washington's no good and hit the top bar over the hoop and that's that's one of the nuances of this Max Stern Athletic Center is you get those bars right above so if you miss even by, even even over the over the backboard just by a little it could be called dead as Jeffrey Owen has the ball for the Max 339 left to play Max up by 9 yeah. 31 22 life are back in the low post now Controlling Max moving the ball what you're supposed to do against the zone. There it is. What a pass nifty pass But denied Great by block. Chase Johnson and Elaine Washington in transition gives it over to Pedro Marquez back to Chase Johnson He goes up and that was good Great. And it's a 31 24 lead now Great finish by the lefty, but the max big pass up to lifer, but they're gonna call the foul On the Panthers. I believe that was on Gamara's yeah, and life will go to the line for two We said it transition offense and what you cannot do if you're a basketball team is give up a transition bucket or foul off of a made bucket. That is a big no-no, especially if you're a coach. You do not want to see that. We saw the Panthers scoring on one end, and the Max were just able to run it down. A big pass by Terrell to Leifer gets fouled. Could not convert at the free throw line, though. As Let's that, see if he can stretch it to eight. That was no good, and the Max faithful getting breaking out the you-can't-do-that post-foul chant. A and very clever chance. I'm not sure what the origin of that was, but it seems to be uh -huh. uh, very popular amongst the Max faithful. As Lifer misses both, still a seven-point game. The Panthers right in this. Gamarez has the ball, sends it over to Pedro Marquez. Marquez now to Elaine Washington, driving on Donnie Katz. He fakes, goes up. That one's, I believe, didn't hit anything on the rim. So now it's back to Terrell. Terrell puts it up. That's no good. He gets his own rebound, picks up his own garbage, and he takes the garbage out. And it's a 33-24 lead with 2.39 left to play here well, in the first. Turns garbage into gold. Nine-point game now for the Max. Ryan Terrell finishing what he started. Relentless on the offensive glass. Allen McDonald looking to check back in as soon as we get a stoppage in play here. As Coach Steinmetz looked to have wanted to travel there, but didn't get the call as Tal Guetta comes down with the ball in transition for the Max. Sends it over to Terrell. Terrell dishes it down low to Donnie Katz, who tried looking for Tal Guetta. Didn't work out, and it will be Panthers ball with 2.13 left to play, 33-24 Max. Not a great pass by Katz, but love the idea. Passing the ball to the middle, trying to hit cutters. Didn't work out from there, but almost had a layup. Nine-point game for the Max. The Panthers hanging around ever so slightly. I want to see, I'm curious to see what happens in these next two minutes. I think the Max want to really stretch this lead out to about 12 or 13 but the panthers easily could cut this to five and then we'd have a ball game coming into halftime as mcdonald back in this game let's see if he can stamp it and make it his chase johnson great to pass. gamarez and that's going to be cut the, the lead down now down to seven it's 33 26 
with 145 left to play here in the first. Tal Guetta gives it to Jeffrey Owen over to Leifer, dishes it down and finds the cutting. Jeffrey Owen, but they're gonna call an offensive foul on Owen. And it will be Panthers ball with 138 left Great to play here in the first. By Gamarez, making plays on both ends, comes into the game, big layup, big taking charge. And now the Panthers back down seven, a minute 30 in this half, can cut it to five or even four. Samuels with the ball now, he gives it over to Marquez. Marquez calling out a play for his Panthers. 125 left to play. He gives it to Gamarez. Gamarez with the three. No good. And Terrell comes down with the rebound. 118 left to play. PJ by Gamarez. No good though as Ryan Terrell brings it down. Terrell just finds Jeffrey Owen. Terrell now for three. No good. And they've been, they haven't been hitting that three so far this game. Nope. Are the max that either team have, have not really been hitting the three. We saw a three from Simcha Halper, but I believe other than that, there hasn't been much. Yeah. Terrell, as Terrell as a little bit flat on his jumper tonight, but he's making impact in other ways. A couple good post layups, some good defense, some good passes, and that's what that's who he is. He's not just a shooter, he's not just a scorer, makes an impact wherever he is on the court, and that's why he's so valuable to this max basketball team. Panthers, that's Pedro Marquez puts it up. Oh! And it didn't get the bounce it was looking for after the fact. Wouldn't have counted, but would have been nice to see. As Simcha Halper back in for what is seemingly the last or second last possession of this half. Max only up seven. Not exactly what you want to see if you coach Diamonds, but you'll take it. The Max were up as much as, I believe, 16 earlier in this half. Can't, didn't close it out well, but still have another possession. Maybe could stretch it to 10, even with a three ball. Tal Guetta hesitates, gives it to Terrell. Terrell finds a cutting Guetta. And they, that, that cut pass has not been working so far this game. We've seen a lot of plays go out of bounds, a lot of missed passes. So the Max are going to have to talk that one over in the locker room during halftime. Yeah, too many miscues by the YU Max. That's what a zone will do to you. They'll make it look like you have that pass, and then they'll collapse right after the pass is thrown. We've seen it a number of times. The Max, a handful of early turnovers, really hurting their chances. We see a very low scoring affair, only 33 to 26 both under these teams first half averages. Samuels brought it in and he gave it over to Pedro Marquez. Marquez with Terrell on him. 10 seconds left to go. Gamarez drives, tries going up with it, but it's denied by Leifer. And that will be the end of the half. 33-26 in favor of the Max. We'll be back with the second half just after this.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Max Turner Athletic Center. This is YU, Yeshiva University Maccabees Basketball, brought to you by Max Live. My name is David Schwartzman. To my right is Jacob Dower. Jacob, what have we seen so far in this game that has translated to a 33-26 lead for the Max? Well, let's start with the first JD key of the game. Rebounding the YU Max 24-14, out-rebounding the Panthers, limiting the offensive glass for the Panthers, getting offensive rebounds of their own. It's really allowed them to jump out to the seven-point lead, as well as the three-point shooting. Both teams shooting abysmally from the three-point line. Two for 13 for the Panthers, two, just two for 10 for the Max. Neither team hitting threes, almost a wash. And transition, we're gonna use the eye test. The Max, not bad in transition just thus far, running on blocks, rebounds, and even made baskets. We saw Gabe Leifer shooting two free throws after a made basket. Panther, uh, the YU Max, not their best game, but they'd be happy to be up by seven, playing par basketball at best. Let's see if they could turn it around, blow this game open at the start of the third. And we're gonna get the usual suspects for the Maccabees. It'll be Halpert, Guetta, Terrell, Leifer, and Katz. And for the Panthers, it'll be Alan McDonald, joined by Pedro Marquez, Chase Johnson, Stanley Baker, and Justin Elaine Washington. McDonald has the ball down low as we start the second half. Baker, excuse me, Stanley Baker goes up with it and it's no good and goes out of bounds. It'll be Maccabee's ball 20 seconds into the half. Yep, and Phil Jackson, the great Phil Jackson, always said the way you start the second half is likely the way the game will go. Fans still getting back to their seats, getting their food. Not a lot of energy in the building right now. Got to feed off your own energy, score a couple baskets, hopefully jump out to um, an early lead to start the second half and break it open to double digits as Ryan Terrell, no good from the short corner. As it's back to the Panthers and Pedro Marquez could not find Stanley Baker and it'll be Max Ball with 19-16 left to go here in the second half. Yep, Max getting some gifts early on, a little turnover, a miscue. Looking to extend the lead right now. Slow it down. Panthers back in their zone as Donnie Katz uncontested in the middle. Want to see him be a little more aggressive. Maybe shoot that ball. As Lifer knifes into the paint. A nice left-handed two. Nine-point game. Gabe Lifer, who has seven points so far, and that's actually nine for him now, as he's looking to get into, get into the double digits in terms of points and rebounds. He's at nine, so... He's likely to hit a double-double tonight. Pedro Marquez has the ball, gives it up to Chase Johnson. He's at the top of the three-point, and that he went up with it, but it's blocked by Lifer. Alan McDonald went up, but no good, and taken back by the Max. It's sent all the way down to Lifer. Lifer with Chase Johnson on him. He finds Simcha Halpert in the corner. Back over to Lifer, back to Terrell. Terrell driving, he goes up with it, it's easy. And that's, that's Ryan Terrell. His 12th point of the game, it's 37-26. Back up to a 10-point lead for the Max. 18-14 left to go yep. here in the second. Beautiful left by Ryan Terrell, extends the lead to 11. And Gabe Leifer again, hedging hard on the high ball screens. Worked out last time, you saw a block. Gabe Leifer with the great defense. As That's Baker, no good, rebound by Guetta. Guetta gives it to, to Halpert, who finds Leifer. He's driving, he goes up and they're gonna call the offensive foul. We've seen it often here from the Panthers. Panthers putting their body on the line, not afraid to take that charge. Love to see that if you're Coach Tomlin. Gabe Leifer, no good on the layup and call for the charge as the Panthers now looking to cut it back to a single digit game. The Max are actually currently ranked fifth in the nation in field goal percentage, 52%, and, and they've got a lot of stats up their sleeves, something we haven't seen from, from the Maccabees so far. They, they were in the conversations with the likes of R.J. Barrett earlier in the season. And I, I laughed a little bit at that, but it was true. Some, some of the stats that these guys have been putting up have just been record-breaking as Terrell puts up his 14th of the night. Another one. And Ryan Terrell not shooting well from the three-point line, but making his presence felt in the paint. He's got 14, I believe, all in the paint. Hasn't hit many jumpers as the stands want a travel. Will not get it as Coach Tomlin with the timeout down 13. 17-23 left to play in the second half. And the YU Max, we saw it, jumped out, 
Now up 13, started the half up seven. Great way to start the half for the Maccabees. We've seen this a lot from the Max breaking away in the second half. And they, have, they weren't really able to push that 10 point lead late in the first, but now we're seeing it's up to 13 now. So we'll see what they can make of this big lead as we head deeper into the second half. Yep, and you can never score too many points, especially at this point of the season. Hopefully the YU Max can blow this game open. Give some of their bench players some minutes. Always like to see these new guys out there. Um, and especially at this juncture late in the season, guys get tired. I mean, they have tired legs. They're playing two, even three games a week, most weeks. In addition to practice, early mornings, late nights, really a lot of miles on these legs, especially at this point in the season. So we'll see. Hopefully they can break this game open. Then get some rest, get some new guys some minutes. Tyler Hode is a guy maybe to keep your eye on. He was injured the first couple of games of the season, almost the first half of the season. He's healthy now, and he's suited up and ready to go. Guys like Kevin Boker as well, guys that, that got big, big minutes last year, and this year with as the team is, has just improved that much over the last season, haven't seen as many minutes, but, yeah, but really make the bench run deep. We haven't seen a lot of Boker tonight. I mean, I don't think we've seen him at all, but he's always ready to get in there. Get some rebounds, score some easy buckets. And we talked about Daniel Tsion, the freshman, was tremendous early on in the season, got hurt. He'll be out the remainder of the season. Chase as Johnson for three. Chase Johnson, there he goes. Makes the lead now only 10 for the Max. Just as I was speaking about breaking open, the Panthers get right back to 10 points as Simcha Halpert puts it up. That's no good. Another missed three from the Maccabees. And it's taken back by Terrell, given to Leifer. Over to Simcha Halpert. He fakes. Drives, give it to, gives it to Lifer down low. And it's an and one for Lifer. He's going to head to the foul line for a foul shot. Yeah, love to see the unselfish play by Simcha Halpert. Had the three, up fake, dribble drive, great bounce to Lifer with the up fake himself. Gets the and one. Unselfish basketball by the YU Maccabees. Extends the lead to 12 with a chance at 13. Gabe Lifer, a great half. It's been the Lifer Terrell shot here in the second half. Great start by the Max. As Leifer hits it, and it's a three-point play. He completed it to make it a 42-29 lead. Their, their lead's back up to 13 with 16.43 left to play. It's Pedro Marquez with the ball for the, for the Panthers as he finds Alan McDonald for three. That's good. A line drive three, good for Alan McDonald. And it's back to a 10-point lead for the Max, 42-32, excuse me. That was a two, so it's back to an 11 point lead. It's 42 31 with 16 20 left to play. Simcha Halpert for three. No good, and we've seen that's the third time now tonight that's hit that top bar. I was talking about that before. It's a little bit of the nuance here at the Max Stern Athletic Center. Yeah. We've, we've seen plays called dead due to that bar, but it's going to be Panthers ball with 16 16 left to play. And they're going to actually bring that back to a three pointer for McDonald. McDonald throwing three fingers up to the air. Looking for some more of those. Maybe it will get him going. We talked about him in the pregame show. Their highest score hasn't really had much to do on the offensive end thus far. But maybe that will jumpstart him. Down only 10 as McDonald comes off the down screen. Marquez found McDonald who gives it over to Chase Johnson. And that was no good. But they're going to call an offensive foul. I don't know who the culprit was. But it, Tal Guetta handled it for the max. And I believe it... It was Alan McDonald, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to call it on number zero, Excuse Elaine me, Washington. Elaine, Elaine Washington. Yep, and great box out by Guetta. Going to get that loose ball call as the Panthers are just heaving up threes. We've seen that some go down, but most haven't. Not the best way to get back to this ball game. As Gabe Leifer looked like a foul, no call. Big rebound by Donnie Katz, who throws it away. Taken back by Marquez, and he's pushing in transition, and he's going to look for it and take it himself, and it rolls it. In and out, but they're going to call the offensive foul on Marquez. Donnie Katz helped with that play, setting his feet. Yeah, it's going to be on number 24, Stanley Baker with Excuse the push. Me, Stanley Baker. Donnie Katz boxing out. We saw that twice now. They're getting thrown around, and they'll be okay with that. Great box out. Don't even need to get it. Just get the call as Togueta hesitates and Gabe Leifert in the middle. Leifert Great pass. Terrell and, and Terrell, that's almost automatic for... As he puts it in, and it's up to a 12-point lead for the Max. 44-32, 15-20 left to play here in the second. Yeah, a little no-look by Gabe Leifer. We know it. He's great in the high post. Elaine great Wa cut by Terrell for the easy two. Elaine Washington, excuse me. 
Allen McDonald has the ball at the top of the three. Given to Chad Johnson. Chad Johnson looking over his options. Sends it to Elaine Washington. Elaine Washington with, with Gwetta on him. He tries going up with it. But Lifer denies him. And they're going to call the foul on Lifer. Yep. A little bit too much on that play. Thought it was clean. They're going to call it anyways. Looks like they have Guetta on the board. We'll see if they leave it for him. But the YU Max playing well out of the half. Panthers getting to the line. Elaine Washington really been their best player in the offensive end for the Panthers. Scoring, high score in the first half. Seemingly the high score in the second half as well. Uh, he's playing some good ball as the Panthers are just hanging around. Not doing too much. Fortunate to still be in this ball game. Shot just 30% in the first half of play. Not going to get the job done. Playing almost equally as well right now, but let's see what they could do. Only down 10, hanging around. They're within striking distance. A couple of those three fall. A couple of those threes fall. They'll be right back in this game. Elaine Washington had hit his two. He had seven in the first half, and he brings that total up to nine. Donnie Katz has the ball on top of three. Lifer with the ball. He sends it to Guetta. Guetta looking over his options, gives it to Simcha Halpert from the corner. That's no good. Given back to Toretto, excuse me, Lifer. He gobbles it up, and that's the double double for 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 Lifer. And it's a 14, it's a 12 point game for the Max, 46 34. Yeah, there it is. Big offensive board by Lifer, puts it in for two. Back out to a 12 point game, and we see the strong defense, but Alan McDonald with the slip and the lefty and one. That's a great play by McDonald. The YU Max have been stepping out all game on the screen, hedging hard, and that's how you beat it. You know Lifer's going to step out. McDonald slides right, slides right through. A great bounce pass and an even better finish. Going to the line. Try to cut this lead to just nine. I don't know if they gave him the two yet on the board. As Mike Hayone, number 31 in the game for Lifer, picking up his third foul. Not what you want to see for Coach Diamonds. Alan McDonald, not particularly tall. He's 6'2", but he makes his presence known. He's a big guy. And he got that call, and he hits the foul shot. So it's a it's a nine-point lead for the Max. 46-37 with 14-14 left to go here in the second. Simcha Halper brings up the ball for the Maccabees, gives it to Donnie Katz. Donnie Katz with the ball over his head, looking for his option, sends it all the way across to Terrell. Terrell driving, finds Talguada. Talguada, 4-3. That's no good, but it's Mike Hayon comes to clean up the mess. But it's taken back by Elaine Washington in transition. Alan McDonald driving. Puts it up. That's no good. And it's no good again by Elaine Washington. And they're going to call the foul. On 20, Simcha Halper. He Sim cannot believe it. A loose ball foul. Seemingly great individual defense. The Panthers had a two-on-one on that end. Could not get the job done. Halper, they're going to call, I think, a loose ball foul. But it looks like they're at the line right now. We'll see what happens. After two misses, so Alan McDonald and, and Elaine Washington both missed. Uh, McDonald missed the original put in, and and uh, Elaine Washington missed the putback, and then there was the foul. So Elaine Washington will inbound for the Panthers with 13:49 left to go here yeah, in the second, and it's tipped by Guetta on the inbound and taken back by Terrell. Terrell now looking at a nice behind the back move, but taken by Elaine Washington. Luckily, Talguetta was back to guard, so no fast break. It's sent back up to Chad Johnson. Given to Marquez. Marquez, 4-3. No good. And it will go after Michael Hyone trying to corral it. It goes off Elaine Washington. Donnie yeah. Katz gets the high five from the security guard. And with 13.35 left to play, it's a nine-point lead. 46-37 to 37 in favor of the Max. Yeah, they're going to get Elaine Washington with the loose ball foul. But for the Max, not what you want to see. Halpert with three fouls. Lifer with three fouls. Some questionable calls. But their calls, their fouls nonetheless. Got it. Terrell for, Terrell for three. And it's good. 49-37 Max. It was just a matter of time until he would hit one. Didn't hit one in the first half, but there he is. Here goes McDonald, three. and he answers. So right after Ryan Terrell hits his three-point shot, Alan McDonald, the star player from the old Westbury Panthers, responds, and it's back to a nine-point lead for the Max. Now Terrell, that's good. Wow, Ryan Terrell showing off now two in a row. A back-and-forth game. We did not see this in the first half. 
Hot shooting on both sides of the ball. Neither one could buy a three-point bucket, and now they can't miss. Now Alan McDonald, he's going to look to do something himself, but he defers to Baker, who gives it back over to Marquez with Jeffrey Owen on him. He checked into the game for the max. Pedro Marquez gets it with a nifty move, gets Jeffrey Owen off him, but that shot is no good and taken back down by Terrell, who has got seems to have ice in his veins right now. Yeah, Ryan Terrell will see if he heaves up another one. Two threes in a row as they pass to Hayon, a big move. Donnie Katz sent it down to Michael Hayon, but that was no good as the old Westbury faithful is getting loud here. Let's see if the Max faithful can respond. Yeah, Mike Hayon slowing it down, draws the foul, let's see how he does. He's a real force in the paint. We saw him an offensive rebound a couple possessions ago, could not finish, but Ryan Terrell has that ability. Two threes in a row, no hesitation. Multiple feet behind the three-point line as the Max now up 13 with a chance to stretch it to 14. Just 12-23 left in this ball game. And this is what you like to see with Leifer and Halpert sitting. It's good to see how, how much this bench can be stretched, especially down the stretch with the end of the season coming up and inevitably the playoffs. That's something that you're going to need if you're going to want a deep run. The Maccabees are looking to make it two straight years as conference champions. Last year, defeating Purchase College, who they're taking on next week here at the Maxner Athletic Center. And you can tune in. That game will be live on Max Live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. from the Maxner Athletic Center. Pedro Marquez takes the ball, sends it to McDonald. McDonald, he's looking with vengeance, and he drives, and it's good. And frustration from Tal Dweda, who sent the ball into Jeffrey Owen. Yeah, what a take by McDonald. Coming alive in the second half. This is what we thought he'd be doing in the first half. Great take, only an 11 point game now. As Hayon outside, not where he's used to, back in the paint now. Terrell gives it to Hayon, who tried passing it, but McDonald intercepted another nice play. And Marquez brings it back to a nine point lead. It's 53 to 44, and Old Westbury's really hanging in here. Back to a seesaw affair, back to a nine point game as Halpert and Leifer with three fouls apiece looking to check back in. They have to be disciplined on the defensive end, cannot afford another foul for either of them. Donnie Katz has the ball down low. He's looking for his options, puts it up, no good. And now their transition, they're really going, Alan McDonald's really going to that transition game, but they're gonna call the foul before the shot on Jeffrey Owen. Wow, McDonald is fired up. No one could stop him right now. He's getting rebounds and he's taking the ball hard. Coast to coast, they're gonna actually send him to the line for two. We see him shooting the ball well, looking to convert, and can cut this lead to seven. A seesaw affair, as we talked about. It's seven, it's 13, it's back to nine. 14, and now back to seemingly seven points. Could be just where we started. Um, if he hits both of these, it'll be a wash after eight and a half minutes of this half. Gabe Leifer and Simcha Halpert ready to check in for Guetta and Jeffrey Owen. And clearly, they're trying to get more size on Alan McDonald, who seemed to have found his groove here with 11.29 left to play. Yeah, Coach Steinmetz known to sub pretty often, but not doesn't go so deep into his bench as the starters play heavy minutes. Saw two of these starters out for a couple minutes, wasn't having it any longer as the Panthers went on a little bit of a run. Gonna run back with his core crew, plus Mike Hayon and Jeffrey Owen need some more offense and spark plug as McDonald goes one for two. And he's gonna check out of the game. He can't believe it. Nicholas Gamarez checks in for Alan McDonald. And McDonald is feeling the same way we are that he was in some sort of groove, but Coach Tomlin decided to take him out nonetheless. Yeah, as now the Panthers in a full court man to man defense, a new defense to see how the Max line up to it as Halpert throws it away. Halpert gave it right over to Shakiro Samuels, and now it's. Only an eight point lead for the Max. 11 11 left to play. It's getting a little dicey here as the Max are looking to extend their win streak from 13 games to 14 games against the Old Westbury Panthers. Here from the Max Athletic Center. And Brian Terrell has been doing it all tonight, and he takes the offensive foul for the Max. Yeah. That was Gamarez who, who was called for it. And he's going to come right back out of the game as Washington coming right back in. Coach Tomlin, a quick 15 second breather for his best player. Um, and the Panthers back in their full court man-to-man -man worked on the first possession they were in it. Let's see what happens now. The Max likely they're going to set some on-ball screens, some off-ball screens, maybe some iso ball. We'll see as Donny Katz trying to post up. And it seems like the Max are just trying to use what they have left in the tank here as Leifer easy 
Shot goes up with it and hits it, and it's back to a 10 point a lead for the match. A beautiful Mets. backdoor cut and a beautiful seal and a beautiful pass by Donnie Katz. Easy two for Lifer. Great play after the turnover for the Max. Getting it back, stretching lead to 10 as Washington, or excuse me, as McDonald. A lefty two. He's on fire in the second half. And the Max are going to have to figure out what they want to do about McDonald. But once again, it's back to an eight point lead as Terrell has the ball with Chad Johnson on him. Sends it over to Halpert. Halpert on the wing. Gives it to Terrell. Terrell. Owen for three. No good. Taken down by Donnie Katz. He goes up with it. Oh, and it just doesn't go in. But he's going to have to line for two. Yeah, Donnie Katz. Big rebound. The ball rolls out for Jeffrey Owen. Donnie Katz right there to clean it up. Could not go really close. Everyone waiting for that to go down. But he'll go to the line for two. Donnie Katz has to make a count right now. Only up eight points. McDonald balling up on the other end of the court. Keeping the Panthers in this game. Let's see if Donnie Katz can make it a ten-point game. And, and the he first does. One good. And if I've said Chad Johnson in the past, that would be the wide receiver for the, the former wide receiver for in the NFL, quite a prolific one, uh, notably for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, and now he changed his name to Chad Ochocinco. Ochocinco, 8-5. So I did not mean Chad Johnson. I meant to say Chase Johnson. Both stellar athletes, though, as we can see. As Donnie Katz is his second, and the lead back up to 10. 10 3 left to play here in the first. Dower, what are we what are we seeing going moving forward? What do the Max have to keep up and maintain to contain to to keep this lead? Well, it really seems like after the first couple minutes, this is already an eight-point game, and it's really been between seven and fifteen or fourteen the entire day. Take out those first eight points of the ball game for the Max, and we've been playing even since then. Both teams playing not their best basketball, but just good enough to stay alive. Three-pointers falling at a much higher rate in the second half. Offensive scoring at a much higher rate in the second half. I would say the next team to make a couple stops could come out victorious. The Panthers, if they could put up three or four stops in a row followed by buckets, they'll be right back into it. And similarly, the Max, a couple stops in a row, and this game could be 16 or 18 in a flash. And if that happens, they will probably cruise to victory. So we'll see what happens coming out of this timeout. Once again, the Max are looking to make school history, continuing their win streak, making it 14 in a row. This is some historic season they're having after getting off to that slow start. We talked about it before, but they've triumphantly brought back what we that magic we saw last year at the in, the in the home stretch. They've maintained it for a little bit longer, but they're just looking to keep the good times rolling. Here at the Maxner Athletic Center, 9.45 left to go here in the second. Alan McDonald has it for Old Westbury, and he goes up with it, and he's just on fire in this second half. It sounds like every point the Panthers are scoring are coming from the hands of Alan McDonald. Yeah, he cannot be stopped right now. Got to body him up, cannot let him catch the ball that deep because he's not going to miss from there right now. Terrell with McDonald on him. That's who, they're that's who the Panthers are going to match Terrell with. So... As Jeffrey Owen, wow. nifty move, nifty pass. Unbelievable cut, unbelievable pass, and an unbelievable finish. That's what the Max are doing right now. They're passing the ball well, they're cutting without the ball, and they're getting easy layups. They don't even need to take deep shots. So far, it's been basket for, ba for basket, that, or that's what it seems like this half. So let's see if the Max can get a big stop here. Pedro Marquez has the ball, gives it to McDonald. He's been hot, going in on to Lifer. And once again, there we go. Are you surprised? No. It's Alan McDonald who brings it back to an eight-point lead Alan with 8.40 left to go here Alan in the McDonald, second. Alan McDonald, Gabe Leifer was, was bodying him up, and it seems like McDonald could do nothing in the first half. And it's a different story right now as he's balling as Sim Hopper tries a lefty floater of his own. No good, but Gabe Leifer. Gabe Leifer with the behind the back, I guess you could say, lay-in. And it's back to a 10-point lead, so really we're just seeing basket for basket here. And once again, let's see if the Max can get a stop. Oh, a, a little cheap play, but it works out, but taken right back by Marquez. Terrell got excited there, tried finding Simcha Halpert, but Marquez was right where Terrell was looking as McDonald fakes the three. Gives it to Marquez. Marquez, 4-3, that's good. And it's now a seven-point lead with eight minutes left to go, and things are getting dicey here. The Max just trying to stay in it. And they're going to call the foul on Elaine Washington with 7.57 left to play. Yeah, that's going to be on the ground. And who else with the assist on the other end but number 25, Alan McDonald. 
getting it done. But the fact that he's scoring, the defense has to keep him honest, drawing the defenders and kicking to a wide open shooter. And the three pointers are now falling for the Panthers. Only a seven point game. Terrell, a great foul shooter, looking to extend it to nine. And Terrell hits the first, and it's back to an eight point lead, and he can extend that to nine. Eight team fouls for Old Westbury, so they have to be careful now. Max staying in at five. That was another big issue the Max had early on this season. A lot of foul trouble. So, so they were giving up a lot of points and a lot of foul trouble, but they seem to have really fixed those things up heading into the after heading into the second half of the season. Yeah, and neither Lifer nor Halper with the foul since they've come back into this game, playing tough defense but legal defense. Love to see that remaining in this game with only three fouls. Do not want to pick up their fourth as the ball right back into McDonald. Let's see what he does. McDonald with, with Lifer on him. He passes out to Elaine Washington. Four three. That's no good taken down by Jeffrey Owen, who's got pressure on him, and he finds Terrell, Elaine Washington right behind him, but Terrell saw him, he puts it up, and it's good, and it's an 11 point lead for the Max with 7.28 left to play. And Ryan Terrell with his patented runner, floater, jumper, whatever you wanna call it, it's gonna go in more times than not, the beautiful eight footer for two, back to an 11 point lead. Jacob, did you ever play against Ryan Terrell? Not only did I play against him, but I had the fortune of playing with him for a couple years back in middle school. I'll tell you this much, he wasn't this tall back then. Um, always been a shooter, always been a scorer, always been a great player, but really making the most of his newfound height in the past couple years. He's a menace, he puts hours in, and it's paying off, scoring the ball at will tonight and all season long. And teams are just trying to figure out what they can do about that Ryan Terrell problem, but he's not a problem for us. As the Max are up by 11, 65-54. 7.13 left to play, and again, a nice low scoring performance. Nice in a sense of defensively, a great performance by the Max. Not in terms of the amount of points they've been putting up, but they're looking to extend that as Halpert, 4-3, bang! That's Simcha Halpert, you can put three points on the board for him. Big shot by Halpert, in transition, had a man for a layup, wanted three of his own, he's got confidence, he'll hit that. Big three, up to 14 for the YU Max. They're looking good. Max up 14. As Marquez sends it over to Samuel. Samuels tries to respond, but that's no good. Way off. And he's going to hear from the crowd. They're going to let him know what just happened, as if he didn't already. And the Max, 14-point lead. 6.30 left in this ballgame with the ball. They are looking just great over the past couple possessions. Opportunity to extend it to 16, maybe 17. And they, have as a little, Leifer. they have a little pep in their step, and Lifer for sure had a pep in his step. He's going to extend the lead now to 16. That's the biggest lead of the game for the Max. Gabe Lifer letting McDonald know that he's a force as well. McDonald's been doing it to him at the other end. Gabe Lifer on his own end bodies him up. A great right handed hook for two as Jeffrey Owen called for a foul 92 feet away from the basket. Not what you want to see, but got to love the aggressive play. Um, we'll have Marquez at the line for a one and one as the uh, YU Max for the bonus. What have you seen from Jeffrey Owens so far this season and what's he really been contributing to this Max team? You don't see him take many three pointers or jump shots, but you see him on the defensive end working play in, play out, pressuring the on ball defenders, pressuring the off ball defenders. And you love to see him slashing. We saw it a couple times today, receiving great passes. He will go up with it whenever he has the ball in the paint. A great finisher around the rim. He is the kind of guy you want on your team and the, not the kind of guy you want to play against. As, As Ryan Terrell. They're going to call the foul on Terrell. Great defense by Elaine Washington. Selling it maybe a little bit. Walking casually back to the other side of the court. And that's just part of the game as the Max fans are not happy about that one. But to no avail, it's going to be a... It will be Panthers ball with 6.13 left to go. And it's always nice when the clock stops on 6.13. Yep, maybe. The amount, of, the amount of commandments in the Bible for. A big zechus for the YU Max up 15. A good sign. Maybe stretch this game to 20. Get some new guys in the ball game. Steinmetz usually waits till just a couple minutes to get guys in who don't usually get as many minutes. Marquez gives it over to Johnson. Johnson for three. No good. But Elaine Washington finds the ball, puts it up, and that's no good. But taken back by Al McDonald, who puts it up, and that's no good. And finally, Tal Guetta comes down with it and gives it to Terrell. And now it's Terrell to Halpert. 4-3. Yes! Give it to Halpert again. Three Dang. points on the board for Simcha Halpert. 
And, and it's an 18-point lead for the Max with 5.30 left to play here in the second. And the crowd loves it. Sim Albert, another transition three ball. Stretches the lead to 18 points, all coming off the team. Defense by the YU Max. Letting up some offensive rebounds, but not letting up a bucket. Press uh, transition offense leads to a three-pointer. And another Washington. steal by Terrell. Elaine Washington has the ball taken from him by Terrell. Over to Leifer. Oh, and Leifer thought that Terrell was still in. And a bad pass, bad look. Not sure what Leifer was thinking there. Yep, not a great play by Leifer. Steinmetz is not happy, but we'll be all right. Five minutes left in this ballgame, 18-point lead. Barring a remarkable comeback, the Wiley Max looked to be in the driver's seat. Marquez has it. He sends over to McDonald. McDonald had its helper's back turned, and McDonald misses that one. And Leifer, as per the theme of the Max this season, comes down with the rebound. He's really transitioned more into that big man role this year and been pounding the, the boards. Another as one. Simcha Halpert is making it rain. What has gotten into Simcha Halpert in these last couple minutes? He is just money. Not that it's a surprise, but he has not missed these last three shots. He cannot miss right now. In fuego, as they say. The YU Max love it. The crowd loves it. Players coming out to greet him. Everyone loves it. Everyone's happy. 21-point game. What a great performance over the past four minutes, especially on this Rosh Chodesh Adar. Adar Olive this year. We get two of them. Great start to the next 60 days. Great start to the next 60 days, and hopefully we're going to be experiencing, experiencing a lot of happiness here at the Max Stern Athletic Center. And it's happiness right now up 21, 76 to 55 with 436 left to play. Yeah, and let's see what Coach Diamonds does. He will never take his foot off the driver's seat, whether it's the starters in the game, the bench in the game. He wants to score the ball. He wants to play defense. And let's see what happens. It looks like he's going to still run with the starters a couple more minutes of 21. Simcha Hopper on fire. Love to see that if you're a Max fan, a Max player, or anyone who just loves the game of basketball. Shooting the ball, lights out. Big shout out to Simi Warso, who's in the building today. He's the former president of Max Live. He's my predecessor. And as well as a mazel tov to him on his future marriage and current engagement. So that's always nice to have him in the building. Mazel tov to him. Great to have the Max Live faithful coming back, supporting the new guys, us. Love to see that. Great encouragement. And the Max love to see it as well. Big lead for the Wahoo Maccabees right now. 4.36 left in this ball game. 21 point game. The starters, Coach Time is not taking his foot off the gas pedal, as we said. Wants to stretch his lead out farther and farther. Well, it's a pretty fresh lead, and we haven't really seen maintenance of the lead so far. The Max have been in charge all game, but they haven't really been able to kind of keep pressure and maintain success in this game. So I'm not surprised as Guetta gets fouled going up and he's gonna head to the line for two. But this kind of doesn't surprise me. This is something I've seen Coach Steinmetz do and he kind of likes to get the subs out when he knows and, and when he feels comfortable that the, that the lead is safe. So clearly it doesn't seem like Coach Steinmetz is so sold that this 21 point lead is 100% safe for these last 422. Yeah, but the way the YU Max are playing right now, they are playing almost flawless basketball, up 21 points. It seemed like it was a single-digit game just a few minutes ago. 22 now, everyone playing well, defensively, offensively, and story of the second half, three-point shooting for both teams even, but especially the YU Max. Simcha Huppert hit more threes in the past 90 seconds than the Max hit of the entire first half. 78-55, Max by far at their, with their biggest lead of the night now. Set, that's, that's 23 if you can crunch those numbers. As we see number 45, Caleb Bolovsky transferred into the school just a couple weeks ago, fresh out of Israel, putting in some minutes on the court. The crowd loves it, let's see how he does. Number 45, and he's big. The six, official six. score sheet has him listed at 6'6", six, six, and that does go down as the tallest player on the team, 6'6". Yeah. Six, six. From Denver, Colorado, let's see if you can shadow the Denver Nuggets big, Nikola Jokic, one of the great players in the NBA. And one thing that this team's really been looking for is a, is a true big man, so we'll see if Caleb can, can transition here into that type of role and see a lot of minutes moving forward. Here's Guetta for three. 
That's good. Some miscommunication by the Panthers. Leading to another three ball by the YU Max. And they, not letting up. Pounding the Panthers right now with the past five minutes. What seemed to be a close game a couple minutes ago has slowly slipped out of the hands of the Panthers. As Chase Johnson tried going in and passing, but that's a turnover. And now Terrell looking to bring it up with Marquez on him. He's just floating through, sends it down low to Caleb, who gets his first point of his collegiate career. That's Caleb Malovsky giving the Max a 26-point lead with 3.29 left to play. And Kevin Boker is going to look to check in. Yeah, likely for Donnie Katz, number 32 Boker. Always ready to go. Going to give some valuable minutes. Oh, as Malovsky gets a big rebound, showing that size. Hopping over the Panthers play. I can't see who it was. I think that's, that's Pedro Marquez. Wow. As Malopsky making his presence known. He, want, he wants people to know who he is and, and know about his size. And he showed every inch of that six feet, six inch body that he has there. And he's getting a round of applause for his effort. As That's Donny Katz. Donny Katz checking out of this game. A hard fought effort as Justin Hode also set to check back into the game or into the game for the first time. The three point specialist in for Ryan Terrell, who gets a standing ovation from the bench. From the crowd, a great game, a great second half specifically. Coach Tomlin gonna take a timeout. Um, yeah, gonna talk it over with the team. 3.15 left in this ball game. 26 point lead for the Max. What a great second half past seven minutes playing awesome basketball. Caleb Malobsky from Denver, Colorado. He attended Cooper Yeshiva. Famously known for the Cooper Tournament. And he's, he's something, again, once again, something they've been looking for on this team has been size all along. And he's now the biggest guy on the team. So we'll see what kind of thing he can contribute. And he just makes, his, he really makes his presence known. He's just a big guy. Yeah, we see him off the bench before Justin Hode, before Kevin Boker, maybe foreshadowing some important minutes he might receive down the stretch of the season as he gets accustomed to the YU style of ball. The teammates, we could see him playing serious minutes um, later in the year. As Simcha Hopper is going to remain in the game with Tal Guetta, the two starters with the three bench players. Simcha Hopper going to play point guard with this group. As Simcha Hopper tried firing Malovsky but couldn't. Yeah, they're going to look for Malovsky right now in the paint against number 24, Baker. Let's see how he plays. Want to force him in? See it, what he can do on the offensive end. It's Samuels, Elaine Washington, McDonald. Marquez and Stan Baker currently in for the West for the Old Westbury Panthers. 3:09 left to play. Max up 26, 83 to 57. Kevin Boker, who's in the Max for the, who's in the game for the Max now, sent it over to Halper with a nifty move and the big shot. It's good. Simcha Halpert just putting on a show here in the second half of this ball game. Wow, great play by Halpert. Not phased after the nifty fake. Puts it off the glass from an awkward angle. Makes it count as Idan Soko. There he is. Number 23. Might be his debut, if not one of his first minutes as a YU Maccabee. The crowd loves it. Let's see how he fares. His older brother, Ariel Soko, played a bit for the team a couple years ago. So we see the two young freshmen just transferred into the school. Getting a big Aiden minutes. Soko. Idan Soko. Idan Soko, excuse me. Who... Like once again, is a California native. I, I can't even list to you. I mean, I can. It's two, four, about f there are five players yep. on the max from California. So and Edan, West Coast swing. Idan Sokol, a teammate of mine for many years, along with Aton Halpert, a great teammate, a great player, can shoot the ball, can defend. He's everywhere. He's the guy you want on, his, on your team. Has a corner. He's a great corner shooter. They call him Soak's Corner from the corner. Knockdown corner three point shooter specialist. As we see now, five max bench players getting in good minutes in front of the hometown fans. Love to see it. 240 left in this ballgame. Let's see what they could do out here. As our favorite name, or my favorite name at least, Shakiro Samuels, gonna go to the line for two. I'm a big fan of Shakiro Samuels myself. And he misses his shot. Max currently up by 28, a commanding lead as they're looking to make it 14 straight as they're looking for their second Skyline Conference Championship in school history. 
Aton Halpert, another California native. He's in. He sends it over to Boker. Boker now to Malopsky. Malopsky back to Bo back to Boker. As Hode checked in, that would be Justin Hode. Both brothers on the team, Tyler and Justin. So Justin Hode checks in for the max. It's Justin Hode, Aton Halpert, Kayla Malopsky, Idan Sokol, and I believe that's all the players in for the max as they're just looking to close this one out. And yeah, so Nicholas Gamarez comes in now for Alan McDonald. Some lazy basketball by the Wyoming Max turning the ball over as still the Panthers running with seemingly only seven men. Um, Gamar is going to come back in this game. Yeah, they, they've been rolling out. The, the, their, their bench seems to not go so deep. They've, they've been rolling out basically the same 14 guys, the same, excuse me, seven guys. And that's just what sometimes what happens in this league. You're not going to get deeper than two guys off your bench. And the Max actually, that was kind of what they were guilty of last season. They didn't, they didn't really go too deep. But this season, it just seems like day by day, we see another guy that's coming off and playing big minutes and that can, and that can really hold their own with starting players in the league. Yeah, but although you talked about last season, not many subs. But who was it in the biggest game of the season, the championship game? It was none other than Justin Hode. Seven, six or seven three-pointers in that game came out of nowhere to knock down threes, scored over 20 points. I don't think anyone could have predicted that one, but he really helped lead that team to a victory, and he will be remembered for that game. And as he's in the game right now, maybe he can bring some of that magic back in and hit some threes tonight. Marquez cuts it to a 25-point lead. As... Sokol bringing it up now for the max. 140 left to play as this game looks to wind down. Malobsky has the ball down low. He tries showing off his size but couldn't get the, the shot off on Stan Baker. Taken back by Sokol. Sokol gives it to Malobsky. Malobsky finds Boker down low. Sends it right back up to Aton Halpert who finds Sokol. 4-3. He's looking for his first. No good. As Stan Baker gives it to Pedro Marquez who goes up with it. And that's no good. And he'll head to the line for two. Yeah, we talked about Soak's three-point shooting. The bench really wanted that one. Couldn't fall, but I love the confidence. That's an open three. He's got to take that every time. Should go down more often than not. Couldn't get it that time. Pedro Marquez at the line for the Panthers. 85-60, 117 left to play here in this game. And he cuts the lead now to a 24-point 24 24 point game. Slow ending of this game. A lot of fouls. Want to see the Max just play straight up. As he hits the second shot, and Sokol has the ball for the Max with 114 left to play. Malobsky finds Boker, finds Hode. Hode sends it to Boker. Boker looking over his options, gives it back to Malobsky. Malobsky finds a cutting eight on Halpern and a nice move as he falls. And that's a spark a by eight on Halpert. And we've seen a lot of mom shining moments for this young kid, and I'm excited to see what he has moving forward in his collegiate career. Yeah, a great scoop finish by Halpert. Diving, falling, and finishing a great play. Relentless by Halpert as he's bodying up on defense now. As Marquez couldn't get that to go, but he gets his own rebound and gets fouled on his way up, so and he's going to go to the line. Another foul by the YU Max. Not disciplined. The second group, I know it doesn't matter that much for the scoreboard, but if they're playing, they got to play hard. They got to play disciplined. Want to see him play a little bit better defense. Cannot keep fouling. That's seemingly five fouls in the past two minutes. A lot of free throws for the Panthers. Got a body up, but got, 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 a, got a body up cleanly for the YU Max. Marquez hits his shot. 37.3 left to go as Max just want to close this one out. They're up by 24. 87-63. And Marquez hits... Again, so it's a 23-point lead for the Max. 30 seconds left to play here in this contest. Justin Hode, hard take to the rim, clobbered. Another thing you'll see from these reserves of the Maccabees is just hard fighting and relentlessness. Yep, great take. Going to get rewarded with two at the line. He's a sharpshooter. Should make both these count at the charity stripe. Justin Hode, the senior, misses. Let's go, 
Michael Hayone and Justin Hode are the two seniors on this squad, and Tal Guetta. So they're, lo they're looking to end their collegiate careers on a high note. 30 seconds left to play as we're just going to let the clock wind down. Marquez dribbles for the Panthers. 20 seconds left. As a nifty move by Elaine Washington. Wow, what a finish. Shows what he's made of as this game is going to wind down. It'll end up being an 88-66 win for the Maccabees. Make it 14 straight. The Yeshiva University Maccabees have won their 14th straight contest. 88-66 over Old Westbury. Yep, two road games. And then we'll be back at home. Tune in to us next week. Big game. We have a week from Saturday night. Next Mote Chavez, a big home game against Farmingdale State. The two best teams in the conference are going to square off at the Max Jones Athletic Center. You got to be online or you got to be here for that one. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday as the Max take on Purchase College at 8 o'clock p.m. from the Max Jones Athletic Center. From myself, and Jacob, have a great night, and we'll see you next time.